going to talk about pilot reports and aircraft reports. You may have heard of pilot reports before. You may or may not have heard of aircraft reports before. So what gets reported? So it's what is being observed by some different groups of people, usually pilots, usually in the air. Occasionally a pilot may report something after landing and that's possible to do that they observed in the air while on descent. But usually they observe the phenomenon while in the air, although it could be reported by somebody on the ground. Dispatchers can input pilot reports given to them through either voice or through ACARS communication, which is basically text messaging for large aircraft to send messages to the dispatcher. The dispatchers can input these pilot reports into the web on the Aviation Weather Center website, and this allows information from pilots to be inputted in another way into the system. So in the United States, we use visibility given in statute miles. This is the only part of the pilot report that uses statute miles, is the visibility. Any other distances that we see in a pilot report are distances in nautical miles. So like a location of the aircraft when it reported whatever it saw, that's given in nautical miles. Other things, so visibility is the only thing in statute miles. And there's two types of pilot reports. We have an urgent pilot report and a not urgent pilot report. So first let's talk about the um, ordinary type of pilot report. UA actually stands for unidentified aviator. So this goes back to when we didn't know who was giving the pilot report. An, an unidentified aviator gave that pilot report and that was given the plane priority. The UUA, the U at the beginning stands for urgent. So this meant urgent unidentified aviator. So this is how this information is encoded. If you see a UUA, that's going to be a urgent pilot report. So how to make the report. Uh, it's important that you make the report because especially if something was forecasted and did not occur or something occurred that wasn't forecasted. This really helps out your other pilots and also helps out, as I mentioned, the National Weather Service. So one major way to make the PIREP is just talk to air traffic control directly. And this is very easy to do. You just stay on the frequency you're on and say, I'd like to make a pilot report and they will tell you when to go ahead and you give them the information. I encourage you to try doing this. You can even do this if the weather is great. It's no problem. It's also fun to see your pilot report on the Aviation Weather Center after you land. That's, that's fun. Other way is to call the flight service station directly. So you can call them on the radio and just talk with them about giving the pilot report and they appreciate that very much. They enter that into the system as well. What we're going to report when we make the pilot report, where you are, where this phenomenon was observed for sure, because that's really what we care about. If it was a hundred miles back, well, like let's tell where it actually happened. So where we were when we saw whatever we saw, what kind of aircraft we are, Obviously our call sign is important, but we also need to know what kind of aircraft we are. So we're telling them what kind of aircraft we are, and we'll get into why in a little bit, and what we are seeing. So what's happening around us? What is being seen that wasn't forecast? What is not being seen that was forecast? Here's some common pilot, pilot report abbreviations. A lot of the abbreviations you're going to recognize from METARs, but here is some that are not in METARs. So um, this is a table which you should become familiar with, with how to read pilot reports. Typically they're pretty easy to figure out, okay? Um, above and below, this, these we don't find on METARs. Um, continuous, so that's kind of like the one for lightning with the continuous um, lightning going on around an airport on a METAR. We have during the descent, during the climb, um, so again, as an aircraft is climbing or descending, it may make a report. We have moderate and occasional. So moderate typically is going to apply to turbulence or icing. 
Neg. Let's look at this one in some detail. So this means conditions were forecast, but they did not happen. So it could be like icing um, was forecasted, but it wasn't actually encountered at all. So negative is often what we see on icing. We could also see it on turbulence. Turbulence was forecast, but we got a smooth day. Another one is updrafts and downdrafts. UDDFS, not maybe the most obvious abbreviation there, and unknown, UNKN. Sometimes we see this for the aircraft type, could be not reported, so it's unknown. Could be that the flight is at an altitude, we don't know what altitude it's at, and then it would be reported as unknown. Looking at a pilot report in detail, we don't use all these sections all the time. Um, but it's kind of actually rare to find one that uses all of these sections. So, but let's start by breaking it down. And we're going to go into more detail of this in the next video. But the first thing to know where we're looking for the urgency is right at the beginning of the report. So remember UA, not urgent, UUA is an urgent pilot report. Then we always follow the same format. We're going to have the place that the aircraft reported, whatever it saw. The time, that's in UTC. We're going to get into more of how to read the place in the next video and how to read the rest of the pilot report in the next videos.